good to be together again and we're going to turn our Bibles to Ephesians chapter 1 reading from verses 3 to 12. Blessed be the God and Father our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. 
having predestined us to adoptions of sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise and glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound towards us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. That we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. The Apostle Paul said that God has an eternal plan of the ages. The mysteries of which have been made known in Jesus Christ. What was not early understood should now be plain to every believer. The purpose of their plan is to bring all creation together with Christ as head. God's plan has at least five aspects to it. First of all, there is one God. The Bible states clearly that we worship one God. The Bible opens with the words, in the beginning, God. As we read in Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God. God created the heavens and the earth. And this sets the tone for the biblical doctrine of the sovereignty of God. Paul explained in Ephesians 4.6, that there is one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. <clears throat> God is a living God with whom we must deal. You know, Moses at the burning bush questioned God about his name. And God answered, I am who I am. I am who I am. This is what you say to the children of Israel. I am has sent me to you. Uh, he is the living one. In Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We know that God is a jealous God. In Joshua 24, 19, but Joshua said to the people, you cannot serve the Lord for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God and he will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. The Old Testament often likens God's relationship with his people to the marriage relationship. It took the wilderness wanderings and exile into Babylon for the Hebrews to learn this lesson of loyalty. And it's amazing. It's one that we have yet unlearned by millions today. Even down to today, people have not learned this lesson. Oh, we need God's help. We need to understand God's plan. There is one world. That's the second point. It is a world united in the common bondage of sin. You know, although the world's divided by diversities, yet as the sons of Adam, all people struggle with the common problem of sin. There is no escape of it. We, we, we have this inherent sinful nature. And history is a story of human sinfulness. Biblical history of Noah's day testifies to early humankind's downfall. In Genesis 6-5, we read, Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. 
And Romans gives us an update to the same problems in Romans 1, 21. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened. Then there follows a description of the downward route of humans into idolatry, spiritual blindness and gross immorality. Current news provides a modern commentary and Paul concluded in Romans 5, 12, therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin, and this death spread to all men because all sinned, that's the way of man. There's this downward route of humans into idolatry, spiritual blindness and gross immorality. And current news provides a modern commentary uh, that Paul concluded. It's, it's, it's man is sinful. Man is born and shaped in iniquity. And that, and that death, as we've read, spread because all men have sinned. And our news media speaks truth in stark modern reality. You turn on your television, you go on the internet, you open a newspaper. We're seeing the horrific things that people are doing to each other, both young and old. Sin has just taken over. We need to enter into God's plan. We need God to fulfill his plan and purpose in our life, to break this cycle. God began his plan. God is a God of plan. He's a God of purpose. And he is going to win ultimately. Thirdly, there is one mediator, a qualified intercessor. In 1 Timothy 2.5, we read, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man the man Christ Jesus. Because he was both God and man, yet sinless, Christ met the demands of the law that could atone for our sins. Actually, in the Living Bible, it paraphrases it. God is on one side and all the people on the other side. And Christ Jesus himself, a man, is between them to bring them together by giving his life for all mankind. God's grace brings reconciliation. In Romans 5.20, we read, Moreover, the law entered that the offence might abound, but where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. In Ephesians 2.14, For he himself is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation. God's grace reaches down in Christ to reconcile sinful man to a righteous God. And the, the spiritual reconciliation makes possible reconciliation and fellowship with others of our divided race. Fourthly, there is one people. God called Abraham and said to him in Genesis 12, 2, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. And then he passed it along to Moses saying in Exodus 19, 6, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. And these are the words which shall speak to the children, which you shall speak to the children of Israel. This is a missionary call. It was handed on to other generations of God's people. To the body of believers, the church, God gave a similar commission. As we read in 1 Peter 2, 9 to 10. But you are a chosen generation, 
a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvellous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who has not obtained mercy, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. What powerful scriptures we have. We need to believe the word. We need to hold on to this world word. We, God made us his people. We were once not a people, but now we are the people of God. This is powerful. We, we had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. As, as we go through God's plan, we're seeing the provisions that God has made for us. And there is one mission with one message. And that's the fifth aspect. Our message is the world's greatest need. And Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, three to four. For I have delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Oh, hallelujah, this is powerful. God's plan aspect by aspect has been fulfilled and is being fulfilled even today in this world, this sinful world. God's plan, hallelujah, it is eternal. No one can thwart it, no one can stop it. It will be accomplished. And carrying the message is our mission. That's what we have been called to do. Jesus spoke to his disciples in Mark 16, verses 15 to 16. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And that is is the commission that we have been given. And these words were echoed to the church at Corinth in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 20. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Hallelujah. That's the ministry that we are being called to. Every one of us that knows the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We are a part of God's plan and we are to work to cause the plan to be fulfilled. That others will come to know who Jesus is. We are ambassadors for Christ. And it's, it's so wonderful to know that as Though God were pleading through us, we are his body right now. God is speaking. God is reaching the world through us. And, and, and the apostle says, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Hallelujah. We're a part of that ministry of reconciliation. It's exciting to know that God has called us to be at work as a part of his plan. 
Paul declares that the plan of the ages, God's purpose for humanity from eternity to eternity. Hallelujah. That's the plan that God would reach humanity. It is God's plan that the earth may hear his voice, that the earth may hear the voice of God through you. You are to witness personally, participate in the local church and share your faith to the end of the earth. The church must find its divine place in God's eternal plan. And the question is, are you willing to commit your life, your ability, your spiritual gifts and financial resources to make a bold new step as your part of a priestly people? Come on, are you willing to arise from where you are? We've gone through this pandemic. We're still fighting through the pandemic, but it, we've had time to, to stop, to think, to reflect and to begin to understand God's plan and purpose for our life. We have been called. It's not just about standing on a platform and preaching. Not everyone's called to be a preacher. Not everyone's been called to be a pastor. But everyone has been called to be an ambassador. Everyone has been called to be a worker. We've all been given gifts and talents and abilities and, and, and resources that we can run with this glorious message. And as we, I spoke about earlier on, as, as God uh, spoke about Noah's generation, we are living in a time that's just like Noah's generation. It, it's as if, as you read the scriptures, you're seeing it's exactly what's happening today. The, the hatred, the wickedness, the hardness of heart, it's been replicated in our time. The world needs to know there is a saviour. The world needs to know that God's got a plan, that the stronghold and the power and the dominion of sin can be broken off of people's lives. God wants to use you. God wants to use me to be his voice. That people will hear him through us, in our everyday life. That's where the voice of God can be the loudest. That's where we, we have the largest platform. That's where we, we reach the masses. Every one of us in our everyday life, right where we are, can be God's voice. Declare the news. Fulfill the commission. Share Jesus and allow his Holy Spirit in us to break the strongholds of the enemy in the lives of people. It isn't too late. I believe we're living the most exciting period of time. Jesus is returning, but he wants to work out his plan through us. There are people who are crying out to know the truth, there are people who are, who are longing for the vice grip of sin to be broken off of their lives. We are being called to be that, those priestly people to take this mission message, to take this gospel message and to set the captives free. And as... Isaiah said to God, when God was looking for someone to send, he said, here I am, send me. Will you say the same thing today? As you are a part of God's eternal plan, Lord, here am I, send me. God bless you.